Hello and welcome. So you're on a website or a blog and you have, you must have wondered, what if my website is down a certain point of day? What if my server is down and I'm not even aware of it, right? So there's a lot of tools out there in the market that takes care of this for you. They will basically send you a notification if your website is down. Um, and those tools basically run every few minutes or seconds, depending on the configuration of those tools. Um, some of them are free, some of them are paid. Uh, but what if, as a developer, you could write your own tool that does exactly that? And that's the purpose of this video, um, which basically will show you how to build your own website monitoring tool. We're going to call it Site Uptime Checker Service. Okay, um, so before we actually write any code, I just wanted to show you this picture that shows you the logic of how this service runs. Um, so I have a red box here, which is essentially my service that I'm going to write. Uh, then I have the website on the left in the blue box. And it's a very simple tool. All it does, it sends a request every X duration to my website. And the X duration could be every few minutes, few seconds, whatever we decide. Uh, and then we're going to get a response back from the website. And this service is going to check based on the response if the site is down or not. And if the site is down, then we're going to send a notification to the site owner using a medium such as email, SMS, etc. And of course, this service keeps running every X duration. So it keeps sending the same request, keeps receiving the response. And if it needs to send a notification, it will. So in an ideal world, if you have a service like this, it should never send you a notification because that means that your site is down. But of course, you want to know if your site went down, especially if it's a very mission critical type of site. Okay, so let's build this. Um, I have selected the, um, a programming language called Golang, which essentially is a language that Google started. And it's really fast and it compiles the entire code into a single executable binary. So like if you are used to programming languages like C++, C, you, know, you could actually create a single binary to run. Same thing, but it's really, uh, it's an awesome language and it has a lot of different libraries that come standard. It allows you to build really good tools and web applications and different types of uh, software. So Golang is awesome and I am just beginning to learn it. So even though I'm making this video, I'm not a Golang expert, but hopefully what I will show you does not require a lot of language, uh, I mean, um, doesn't require a lot of knowledge of Golang itself, but you will see how easy it is to pick up Golang. Um, so if you need to install Golang, just go to golang.org and then go to the install page and then it's got the installation instructions. Um, actually, let me just go back here. This is the main page for downloads. So you're gonna have to download one of the installers and then you just go to the instructions and then follow the instructions. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on the installation of Golang itself, but just to show you real quick here, this page will explain everything you need to do to install Golang. Uh, what Golang does, uh, one of the things that it requires, it actually requires a specific environment variable called GoPath, and this is where you know your source code will go, and for your work workspace directory, and it's something like your dollar your home directory slash go. You could use a different directory, but you don't have to by default. Um, so just make sure this environment variable is, is, is set up properly uh, once you install Golang. The version that I have already took care of this. So if I go into my GoPath directory in my command line, this is the path directory that I have. Uh, in my home directory, go SRC. Okay, so now let's start coding. So I'm gonna create a new project uh, called site uptime checker let's cd into it and let's just open up our code editor i'm using visual studio code which is an awesome editor free of charge and it works on all platforms so for that i'm just going to do code dot so it's going to open up my current project site uptime checker okay let's get rid of the welcome screen okay so let me just expand this window a little bit so you guys can see my recording as much as possible. There you go. Okay. So the first thing is just let's just create a file. So I'm going to create a new file. Uh, I'm going to call it 
main.go. So when you write Golang, you have to have a dot go extension. Okay, so what's the first thing? Golang starts with a package that you'll define. So you're always going to have the package main. And then you import a bunch of libraries or standard library from Golang. So I'm going to do import. And again, the syntax is, you know, it's kind of similar to a lot of other programming languages that you may be used to. So just, you know, go through the tutorial for Golang. Uh, I'm not going to focus too much on Golang specific things, but hopefully this should be self-explanatory. Uh, so we're going to import some packages. So right now, the, the most simple one that we, we're going to import is called FMT. And I'm going to show you how to use that. And now, just like you have C++, it has to have a function called main. So in Golang, you do func main. And now let's do this uh, let's do the logic right so what's our logic we're basically uh step one we're going to send a request to the website okay right i wouldn't do that and then step two if response equals to down and i'll show you how to check that then send the notification to the site owner right and essentially that's all I'm going to do simple right uh, of course we are also going to do every x duration right we're going to do both of you know both of these things right because obviously we want to run this every few minutes or even every few seconds okay great okay so Let's define some variables that we will, or constants really, that we're going to use to run this program. So obviously, if you're web, if you're checking a website, we need to have a URL, right? So let's put those in these const variable things so that they are constant, they are defined, and we're going to define something called site up uh, uh, check time interval. So this is the interval or the duration of uh, you know of a number of minutes or seconds that we're going to check. So I'm going to call it let's say five, and I'll show you what that means. Second, and then the next is the site URL, and then I'm going to call it um, whatever you want to call it. So the the website that you want to check. So in my case, I'm just going to check my my blog, which is uh, this. And then uh, that's it, right? Okay. So I've got, let's put an HTTPS on that because I've got the SSL. Okay, so I've got the uptime check interval, the time interval for five. And, and this is going to be five seconds when I built this. So I'll show you that in the code. And then the site URL. Okay, so we've got these two variables that we can use. All right, so every X duration. So basically, there's a there's a really nice uh, library in uh, uh, Golang called Time. So let's import that. And what that allows you to do is do certain you know uh, functionality around time. So for example, I can do something like uh, for so I'm just going to put a for loop because I want to do every x duration. So Golang has a for loop. Okay, so for and basically I'm going to say x equal to. And again, this is a Golang thing. Uh, sometimes you use the colon with equal, sometimes you don't. And just just learn more about that on the Golang tutorial. In this case, it's just uh, I'm just directly defining it. So it's kind of like a shortcut without finding the type of the variable. So I'm just going to do range and I'm going to do time dot tick and you're going to do it takes a D of duration. So this is the sort of um, how long you want to do this. Okay, so um, I'm just going to say um, site 
uptime checker time interval, right? So every five seconds. So I'm just going to do times time dot second. And I know this is a lot of stuff, but just just bear with me for a sec. Okay, so I'm just saying uh, for x equals to range. This is a fun, uh, basically uh, you're going through a range of time uh, in a loop. And you're saying time dot tick. This is the package or the library that I imported. So I'm basically saying every uh, five seconds. So I'm converting it into a second. So every five second, do something, right? Basically, that's what the line means, which was every x duration. So we got that part. Now we need to do send a request to the website. So in the for loop, we're going to put that. So how do we do that? Um, so this is where Golang again shines beautifully. We have something called uh, net HTTP library, which allows you to send HTTP requests, you know, or pretty much do any HTTP sort of thing. So using the net HTTP package, you can do get requests, post requests, pretty much build an entire API, um, which, which is so powerful. Okay, and no external library is required so far, which is great. Uh, it's gonna be lightweight. Okay, so let's do that. So we get the package in, and now what we're gonna do, we're gonna send the request. And using the net HTTP, the sending the request part is very easy. All we gotta do is, we're gonna do, so we're gonna do response, comma, or, or error equals to HTTP based on that package dot and we can send a get request or we can send a head request generally to check a website if it's up and running you could send a get request or a head request um, the type you know the protocol but I recommend doing a get request because sometimes head requests are not will not send you the right response and uh, you know I know some websites who actually block head requests and things like that so it is safer to use a get request all right and then we're just gonna pass in the site URL that we had defined here okay so and basically this is again a Golang thing you have two different variables here response and an error so if there's any error in this in this function call it's go it's gonna have the ERR you know variable set so this is again a Golang standard or way of doing things to error checking. So if I, if, sorry, I could do if uh, error not equal to nil, uh, then, which means we have an error, it's not nil, which means there's an error. We're just gonna do um, log dot, fatal so we're gonna log this error and for that we actually need to use the library called log so I'm just gonna add that here and then we're gonna do log dot fatal so that means it's a fatal error and just pass the error so this is a very standard error checking in Golang all right so now obviously we're hoping it doesn't go in here otherwise it's gonna have a fatal end uh, if not then we're gonna do FMT, which is the package that we imported, and right now I'm just gonna do a quick print and let's do a print line or LN so that it goes to the next line, a new line, and then we're just gonna do, uh, you know, whatever. So, website response is right colon, and then we could just do response this variable right here, and this would have sent back. A something called a status code which obviously is you know whether it's 200 status which means it's okay or 300 status a redirect or 400 status which means not found things like that so that's what essentially what we're going to check and then maybe if it has a, a status text uh, then we can also get that in there uh, HTTP dot status text and then we're gonna pass in the response dot status code in there. This is how you get the status text. 
Okay, great. So let's just uh, revisit this line. We've got FMT, the print line, website responses, response to status code, and size text. Okay, great. And now let's just, uh, let me just uh, make this video a little bit, uh, get rid of these screens, make it a bit more wider. Okay. So this is pretty much right now. Obviously, we're not checking anything. We're not uh, actually checking the the status code is 200 or 300, which means is it up or down or redirect. We're not there yet. But let's just test this part, right? Okay. So we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do is I'm just going go uh, to the uh, terminal, the and I'm gonna start a new terminal and write into my VS Code, which is kind of like handy so that you don't have to oh, go back to the the actual terminal to compile the code and things like that. Let's save this. And notice that it's showing me one problem. Uh, by the way, in Visual Studio Code, I'm using an extension, uh, I believe, called Go uh, Lint or something related to Go. Yeah, just for a Go. And this allows you to basically, you know, uh, lint your Go code and get any errors and things like that. So. It's very handy. All right, so let's just go back here. It says response to status code dot HTTP undefined. Type int has no field or method HTTP. So obviously I made a mistake here. This has to be a comma and not a dot. And then it's saying status text returns a text for HTTP code. Let's just save it, and now the error goes away. Um, I'm getting one more error saying X declared not used. So, this, uh, so Go is very strict about these things. All right, so we obviously haven't done anything with X. Um, so what are we what are we going to do with X? Um, we are not going to use X right now. Let's remove that because I'm going to show you why I put it there earlier on. I'm just going to do for range uh, like this. Okay, so no problems. So this is right now I'm just doing range over the time every five seconds, get the URL. If no error, then just print it. Simple, right? Okay, let's try that. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to terminal and by default, you just do a build. You could just do go build. What this does, it creates a binary called site uptime checker, which basically came from my folder name, right? So that's my project name. So all I have to do now is if I do site uptime checker dot slash, which means I'm going to run this executable, watch it's going to happen. Five seconds, and it's going to say 200, OK. Another five seconds, it's going to come back. See that? So one, two, three, four, five. There you go. One, two three four five there you go so you get the idea i'm going to control x so i'm going to terminate because this will keep running because it's a it's an endless for loop uh, so you've actually successfully created your site monitoring tool all you have to do now is deploy this puppy this site uptime checker binary on a server um, and let it run in a cron job or something called a service and i'll show you that a little bit later because we're actually going to deploy this on a server like a Linux server like Ubuntu and I'll show you how to do that but anyway so that's all it does right obviously right now this is, this program is not enough because it's just printing back on the screen it's of no use yet we need to do more here all right so let's do a little bit more so now let's improve this function or this program um, so instead of printing uh, to the um, well first thing we need to do is we need to now check if the response that status code is not 200 because remember when you open up a website 200 okay means everything is good right so you are actually expecting if the response is not 200 k right so remember uh, 200 okay so remember this 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 code here I mean this comment so now we're gonna say if response dot status code right and then not equal to 200, right? So we're gonna do that. 
and then only we do something, right? So that's what I'm saying, okay? So essentially, let's clear the terminal here. So if response is status go to not 200, which means something is wrong, uh, then website response is blah, blah, blah. Um, and just to check right now that if it's okay, we're still getting something, I'm just gonna do a simple all the good, right? So, so basically, the notification, the actual notification will only be sent if the status code is not 200. Um, okay, ideally, um, you also wanna make sure that the response status code is between, it is actually not just, not 200, but also if it's 300, 301, it doesn't mean the site could be down, but it could mean that a site had a redirect based on the URL that you were hitting. Sometimes HTTP to HTTPS redirect, which should send you a 301 or 302 response status code. So don't get confused with that. Ideally, you want to check if it's uh, if it's less than equal to 302, then it's okay. Um, but anyway, for now, I'm just going to use 200 um, as an example here. Okay, so we got that, and now let's do the build again, and then let's run it. And then every five seconds, it's going to give me all good, because in my case, obviously, I am getting a 200 response. So, perfect. So, we technically don't need this else case, because all we're going to do is we're going to send the response back into... Uh, uh, you know, um, when it's all good, we don't want to send anything. So we can take this away later on. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, uh, we need to not just print it, if this response does status could not do one, we actually need to send an email. So let's write a function outside this so that we don't put everything in one big function. Why don't we write a function called send email, right? And basically, this function will send an email to whatever you know we want to send the email to and maybe it takes a body of string type so this is how you define a type in golang you give the name of the variable and the type the data types a string which with the body and perhaps we can also do the to string so from whom this email is sent I mean, to who this to whom this email is sent, and um, this would actually um, take care of the email part. Okay, so now let's do this. Close the uh, curly brace and let's start. So what I'm going to do for emails, I'm actually going to use because I'm doing a test. I'm going to use an SMTP service call, um, and I'm going to use a test service called mailtrap.io. So let me show you what mailtrap does. So if I go type mailtrap.io, this is a fake SMTP testing for development teams. It's a really cool service and you should use this um, to do any testing of email so that you don't have to test with real email services in production. Um, the logic would be same, you just have to swap your SMTP details and then when you go live with the actual service. But during testing and development, use MailTrap. It's awesome. All right, so let me just log into my MailTrap, and um, I'll be right back after I log in. Okay, so when I'm logged into my MailTrap, I'm going to go to my inbox. I have a demo inbox, um, and then you can see your SMTP details. So this is your test SMTP for uh, testing, sending email, uh, you know, emails. Okay, so I'm just going to switch now to my code. And what I need to do in my Golang is, in order to send an email, it, Golang has a library called NetSMTP. So now we're going to import that. And basically, I'm going to now just do uh, write the code to send the email. So all I'm going to do is I need to connect with an authentication to my service. So I'm going to do SMTP dot, I'm going to do plain auth, which is what um, MailTrap has provided. And then it takes a few parameters. It takes an identity, which in this case will be blank. Uh, and then it is going to take the username and password and the host string. 
So I'm just going to copy paste my username and password that I already have copied from my MailTrap account. And you can get all that details in your MailTrap or your real SMTP provider. So in my case, I'm just going to copy paste. And guys, don't use mine. <laughs> it's just a test account anyway, but just letting you know because I'm not hiding these um, behind any kind of, uh, you know, uh, blurry tools. So you can actually see mine at uh, MailTrap SMTP. So, so SMTP dot MailTrap dot MailTrap not trip dot IO is the host. And that's all I'm going to do for the authentication. And then we're going to connect to the server and send the email. So first, let's define the tool. So I'm going to do two uh, equals to, um, and we're going to define a string. And in Golang, this is how you can define a string. Uh, and then I'm just going to do the two uh, that I passed in here as a, just a plain string. Okay. So now I'm going to do message and we can send any message we want. So you guys can customize this however you want. I'm just going to say something like, uh, you know, uh, basically, I'm just going to copy paste this because this is uh, already predefined for me from the Golang documentation. And basically, I just copied copied this from uh, Golang's uh, net SMTP documentation. So one of the things that Golang does very well is if you go to Golang's um, page, you can actually see all their packages. And within the standard library, you can see all the different packages they have. So I'm using the net SMTP package. So this is where you know this is where you can see an example uh, and it's very 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 easy see it says here so I'm just copying some of this example from right from here okay so we got the subject subject is oops site is down and then you add the body which we provided in this as well okay so now we're going to just do error equals to again we we're, we're gonna try and send the actual email now. So SMTP dot send email and basically again it texts the address. So in my case I'm just gonna copy paste because I'm doing the test with MailTrap. I already know my address is I'm just gonna copy paste it which is this guy and then I'm going to provide the mechanism which is auth and then I'm going to say who the from is in my from case I'm just going to do sender at site checker dot org whatever so it's to my service and then I'm going to send it to and then with the message which we defined earlier and if Obviously, again, if error not equal to nil, which means we have an error, then we're just going to do log dot fatal that we did before. Okay. Um, all right. So now, so this should take care of my email service, right? Uh, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to return anything. I'm just going to do this. So send email, blah blah blah. With this, with the address, and site is down. Okay. So now all I'm going to do is my main function is if uh, this thing is you know site is down so I'm just gonna print it but I'm also going to send an email so I'm just gonna do send email and then remember I had a, a basically um, uh, I have the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the send email function defined here and I'm just going to Provide the body. Um, please check your site. And then I'm going to provide the two. And it's going to be yc at my, my email service, .com, whatever. It's just a fake email. A mail trap doesn't care. Um, so that'll work. Okay.
and then if I so I save everything I have two problems one is no new left variables on left side so uh, okay so Golang doesn't like that because I have to already define this as a string so I don't think I need to do this let me just um, just, just comment this out and now I have a syntax error um, after label here so I'm missing something here send mail mail stir to and message syntax error missing statement after label so I'm missing a statement uh, SMTP oh I had extra space in here so that's what caused it yeah all right so they should take care of that cannot use type string as type all oh, right so this is where the two thing was coming up here so why don't we fix that uh, a string so this is where my golang language is kind of picky icky um all right i think we can leave that regular two string like this but here to let's call it two email so give it a different name it's like this because we need to convert that like the typecast it into the string array so this should um and to email equals to that okay and then still complaining line 50 from it to oh sorry so the two has to be two email now because we changed the name there you go no problems sorry about that this is where my cooling language still I'm kind of learning so we had to typecast the string but we provide supplied the the basic string in here which when I call the function is just a basic string so we typecast it like this it's to send it into the two email uh, because it could be you know a multiple email addresses also uh, that's how the SMTP library works. Okay, so this is all good. Um, so why don't we test this and see what happens, right? Um, obviously, right now, my status code is going to be 200 because my site is up. Um, so let's change that to, uh, this is my block site, so let's change that to some URL that we know is going to return 400 or 404. So we're gonna try that, right? Okay, so let's do, Go to build and we got the executable and let's do site time checker and actually if we go back to mail trap we should be able to see that in there um, so if I go back to my inbox yeah see oops site is down Oops, site is down already three times. Oops, site is down the fourth time. Isn't this beautiful, right? So the moment I supplied that URL which doesn't exist, I am getting this error. So now note that this service keeps running, obviously, uh, in my computer right now, so I'm gonna keep getting these emails. So let's just stop that. It's executable. So, uh, so you've actually successfully built this service now. Every five seconds, it's going to check my URL and it's going to send me an email if the site is down, essentially. Um, I do want to know, uh, let you know that you could obviously expand this to do other things that instead of sending an email, you could also write a function to send an SMS using something like Twilio API. So there's a lot of different things you can do, but I'm not gonna focus too much on that, the notification part. There's plenty of ways to do that. But I just wanted to show you how to build this tool overall. Okay, so now once this is all done, we could actually improve this a little bit more. And let me show you how we can do this because this is where Golang really shines. So um, why don't we actually wrap this, this four, you know, range time into a function so that if you wanted to do a, something similar, like for every X duration, maybe instead of checking if the site is down, maybe do another thing. 
you know, maybe check if um, get 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 the log or get something else. So if you wanted to wrap this up into some kind of an abstract function, we could do that. So basically, this is um, where we could now wrap that into a function. So I'm just going to write do every x duration. Okay, I'm going to write a function, and it's going to take a parameter called time dot duration. So, uh, which is the elapsed time between two instants, and it's going to then take a function uh, which takes time as a parameter. So, let me just put the skeleton first, and I'll walk you through this. So, all I'm saying is, instead of calling this for in here, I'm going to wrap this into a function called do every x duration, and all this function does. It takes another function as an argument. So in Golang, you can pass that as a func uh, into another function. And what it's going to do is, it's going to now check here that range thing. And remember, I was adding the x before because I had done this before. Uh, and, and obviously, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm walking through the same code that I've written before. Um, so now I'm going to put that x variable in here. So I'm going to say for x equals to range, same thing that we did, time dot tick. And this time we just have the D, which is supplied from the duration here. For that, all we got to do is call the function f of x. So for every five seconds, in my case, because I've defined that as five there, call the function that's supplied to this function. So now I have actually created an abstraction where I can call any function at a certain time interval, not just the function to check for my site. I can now write another function to check something else and just wrap that into this function and it will automatically you know, run that every few seconds or every few duration. So that's great because now you can build multiple services using this function. So now what we can do is instead in my, because remember the idea is that your main function in general in programming languages you don't want to put too much code in here. You want to abstract certain code out of there. So now, because remember, right now, this is all the code that I'm checking to uh, see if my website is down. What if this main function was doing other things, right? So now let's take this out of here. So instead of saying for x duration, blah, 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 now I'm actually going to wrap this into a function. But before that, let's wrap the logic to check for the website also into a function so i'm going to call now i'm going to write check function check if site uh, is up and then it takes the time parameter because you have to supply that when you call this function here remember this function now is going to be check if site is up and it takes a time time parameter so I'm, so you have to wrap that in there as an argument, and then I'm going to say um, uh, here. It's now I'll pass uh, paste all this code. Okay, so it's Control X, and then pass it in here, and I'm going to say okay every um, right. So I'm just going to say response error equals to HTTP dot get. Let's just add a line here. Um, if not there, fatal, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now the site is up, has to be passed in here. Uh, but remember, we've already written the function also for this for range. So now all we got to do is do every x duration. And here we will now pass that time that we did earlier. So now we're going to do, uh, which is going to be, my site interval check interval time uh, times obviously time dot second so every five seconds check and check what you check if site is up so i'm just going to copy the name of the function and that's all i have to do so do every x duration what duration you supply here which is five seconds, check if site is up. Isn't that awesome? And this also tells you what exactly is your main function doing. Because now, essentially, I could do another do every x duration 
And again, I could define another parameter for something else. And I could just do, you know, um, x duration. And I could do another function. So maybe uh, check if uh, data is good or something like that on the side. So, and I could run these concurrently in Golang, which is really cool because Golang allows you to run something called concurrent processes. And I'm not going to go into too much of that because I'm still learning that myself. But essentially, you could add a Go keyword before that and it runs in its by its own, like, you know, in its own process, like it's concurrently. So then you could do the other thing uh, as well. So anyway, so we're not going to do that right now in this, uh, in this tutorial, but that's the idea. So by wrapping it into this function, we've abstracted the every x duration, and then we could do anything in that. So that's cool. So let's save this. So essentially, this shouldn't change anything. So let's just rebuild everything, and then let's rerun it. And if I go back to my, uh, let's just uh, delete everything. So empty inbox. And then let's just see if it's still coming. Yep, so this thing is still running. Oops, side is down. Every five seconds, it's gonna keep running. All right, so uh, that's great. So let me just go back to my code and let's kill it. So we have successfully implemented this tool, uh, I think, which is more than enough in our case to for, for what I wanted to demonstrate. Now, I'm going to pause my video and I'm going to come back with a plan on how to deploy this on an actual server, like a, you know, a Linux server, which I only, I only know Linux, so I will only be able to show you on a Linux server, and how to deploy this uh, executable or binary on a Linux server, uh, so that you can actually run this uh, for your real website and not run this from your own computer. All right, so I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So let's talk about deploying this binary on a Linux server. Uh, so let me just go back to my terminal. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to actually uh, rebuild this executable with uh, some Linux parameters. So I know exactly uh, uh, what to do with it. So uh, to remember we were just doing go build before but this will only build for my local environment in my case my Mac but um, we need to now build it for Linux because I'm going to install this on a Linux server uh, so we need to pass some extra parameters when I'm building the binary so all I'm going to do is uh, go OS equals to Linux and, and then there's something called go arch equals to AMD 64 and then do go build. So what this will do is this will now build this program for Linux. And I can then put this on an Ubuntu server, for example. Okay, so let's do that. And that should create my site uptime checker executable. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back into my browser and I'm going to create a droplet into one of the services called DigitalOcean. And DigitalOcean is a really nice cloud-based provider that provides VPS. Uh, a virtual private server. So I'm going to install this on a in a VPS on DigitalOcean. So I'm going to create a droplet, um, and it's going to ask you the the version. So I can select Ubuntu 16 um, or even 18. So you know we can go with one of them. I think I tested this on 18. So I will just uh, select 18.10, and then I can choose a size. Let's just go with the cheapest. So one GB, five bucks a month, because this binary executable is, is really nothing. It's just a very small uh, binary. It's not going to take much CPU either. So I'm just going to have the smallest droplet. Uh, no backups. It's just a test. I'm just going to install on New York. I'm closest to New York, so um, you want to add your SSH key so I can uh, SSH into the server. You always want to use SSH keys, not passwords. Um, and then I'm actually going to uh, paste my SSH key in here. So I'm just going to pause my video and I'm going to come back um, right after I paste my SSH, SSH keys in here. Okay, so I added my SSH key and I selected that. Uh, and then I'm going to give it a host name. So I'm just going to call it Site Uptime Checker. It's just a name of a droplet. And I'm going to hit Create. 
So this is going to spin up a droplet um, into an NYC location. One thing to keep in mind is that when you are running a service like this in production and real world, um, a lot of these uh, products uh, like Uptime Robot and Pingdom, they're actually they're pinging your site. You know, they do this test from multiple locations to ensure that you know you're actually getting the same result from different locations. Because sometimes what happens is the website can probably load from North America, but it wouldn't load from Asia or wouldn't load from Europe. So you know you want to make sure that you are checking from multiple locations. So so you could essentially spin up another VPS in a different location, like you know somewhere in Europe or Asia, and just essentially install the same binary. And that's why I used Golang in this particular case because it's so easy to just take the single binary and put this on multiple servers that I wanted. So it's really cool. Okay, so let the thing spin up a little bit. It shouldn't take too long. I'm just gonna reload the page to see why I'm not able to create. Um, it shouldn't take this long usually, so I'm just gonna pause and come back. Okay, so once the, uh, the droplet is created, you're gonna see everything is good to go and it gets an IP address. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to SSH into the, uh, the server. So let's copy the IP address, go into my terminal, and all you have to do is SSH root at because you're going to use the default root login. And I'm going to do this. And this should just ask me for the first time attempt to city. And then I'm just going to delete this. I mean, hit enter. And then I'm in to my server. Pretty cool, huh? All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to now install that binary we're going to copy that binary over into this uh you know into this uh, server so let's do, so let's just check where we are on the server in the root directory so fine so we're just going to copy it over so we're going to use a command called scp which is really nice so let me just show you i'm going to go back into this and I'm just going to do SCP um, dash, and then I'm just going to do R recursively, even though in this case it's not really recursive, but if there was a directory you were copying, you could do that. And then I'm just going to copy the site uptime checker binary, and then two, so I'm going to do root at, and again I'm going to paste the IP address. And then colon, which means once it's logged in, where do you actually copy it? So I'm just going to put it into slash root for now so that we can see it on the server. Then we'll move it later on the server itself into a different location. This should do the trick. Let's try that. And there you go. See how easy it was? And the SCP is a really cool Linux command, by the way. Secure copy. Um, so I just copied it over. So if I go back to my thing here, I'm going to see it. Yep. And I can see site of time checker. So cool. So now this is on my server. Now what I want to do is I want to actually run this as a service. Um, on Linux, you can actually create something called a service using uh, a tool called systemd. So if I actually go back and type systemd, uh, this is basically a tool or software from uh, the Debian uh, organization which basically uh, Ubuntu is a variation of that that allows you to do something called system and service manager so this is a very nice lightweight tool to actually run services uh, for example one of the most popular web servers called nginx actually runs as a service so uh, all you have to do is install the binary which we have already done and then create something called a unit file uh, for systemd and then it will and then you can set that up and to run as a service so let's look into how to do that okay so the first thing we're going to do is to create a systemd file or a unit file we are going to let me just clear this first and then we're going to create a file so we're going to use a touch command which essentially creates a blank file under lib systemd system and then we're going to give it a file name so uh, service name so we're going to call it site 
uptime checker dot service. This is the convention or standard for the name of the service. Uh, so I'm just going to use the same name as my binary, but you can give it any name really. And I'm going to create the file. And obviously now I'm going to get into the file. So I'm just going to do VI. I use VI, which is the most common installed editor on Linux. Uh, system inside time checker. And basically this is called a unit file. Uh, so all you have to do is uh, provide certain details about what the service does and what it is. So the first thing it requires is a unit uh, block. So you basically add a bracket, square bracket, unit, and then you describe, you provide a description equals to whatever. So I'm just going to call it site uptime checker. Uh, and after the description, you provide a service block where you will actually now define the service. So there are certain things here. So you define a type, just gonna call it simple. Then you have restart, which will be always. So in case if the service ever fails for any reason, server crash for some reason, when the server reboots, it will always restart itself. Um, and then there's something called restart second. So you wanna do five seconds restart. And then something called exec start, which is where you actually are going to call the binary. So right now it's in my root directory. I'm you could potentially move it back, move it into a uh, like a user slash local bin folder generally for executables. Uh, that's a good practice, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to leave it there. Um, so slash root slash site uptime checker. I think that's called. That's the name of my binary site uptime checker yeah so remember this is the actual binary path to the bi full binary that will run so exec start um, and then there's an install thing in here that I'm not sure what this does frankly but uh, you can read more about it on systemd documentation it's basically something to do with like different user targets so multi uh, dash user dot target so I'm just copying that from the documentation, multi-user.target. And that's all you need to do to define this uh, unit systemd service file. And if I actually, now let's save it and quit. So now if I just, just double check it, if I have this, uh, this service file here, so I got it. Okay, so once this file is ready, all you gotta do is sudo service and then remember the name of the service that you provided. So you're going to call it site uptime checker, uh, site uptime checker, and I'm gonna do a start. And now that service is actually running. Um, and if you actually wanted to check if the service is running, you can do sudo service site uptime checker uh, status, and you can see um, the service is actually started. Um, Say loaded and active. You could also do one more thing, which is enable. So that every time you boot the server, uh, it, it also enables it. So, so the survey site uptime checker. Uh, that did not work. Let me just check something here. Well, uh, one thing I noticed here is it is still printing those, you know, the 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 print line thing. So let's just get rid of that because you don't want to do it on a, on a production server or on a server. So I'm just going to go back in here. And I'm going to just uh, remove this FMT, you know, just cut, uh, just, um, and then take this out as well. Save it, and let's rebuild the binary. Uh, imported and not used, okay, because obviously we're not using the print anymore, so let's just get rid of that. And then let's just do a fresh build. 
and let's do a fresh SCP. And I did a shortcut here, the pound sign SCP will run the last SCP command. And uh, oh, that file is busy because it looks like my server is still running. So I kind of messed things up. Let me just fix a few things here. Okay, so I copied the binary again. This time removed all the print lines and things. And now let's just uh, see that, yeah, it's a uh, binary is still here in my root folder. Uh, now let's just do sudo service site of time checker status. And diet now status is inactive because I stopped it. See, it's saying stopping because I stopped it. Now I'm going to restart it. So I'm just going to say start. And actually it's running. Uh, and obviously, remember that in my code I had a 404 because I had provided this URL which doesn't work. So if I go back to my mail trap, I'm actually probably getting tons of emails right now because now the service is running. So let's just go back to my mailbox and yeah, let's just delete some of the old ones and see what's happening now. Yep, see, still down. So that's great because now the service is actually running on my Linux server and it's hitting my website and it's actually uh, uh, sending me the email because it's a 404.